Hello everybody, today we're going to go through the first section of stoichiometry. I know everybody's a little worried about it, I promise it'll be just fine, just try and stick with it. If you have questions, bring them tomorrow or shoot me a quick email, I will try and get back to you, but I can't make any promises, um, but we will get through it, I promise, together. Okay, so today we're going to start talking about what is stoichiometry. All we know is some scary word that we've been talking about most of the year of this is the hardest chapter. I promise it's really not that bad. You will survive. So stoichiometry, what is it? So it comes from the Greek words of stoichion, which means element, and metron, which means measure. So really we're looking at elements and their measurements, especially after a chemical reaction. So the actual definition of stoichiometry is the study of quantities as related to a chemical reaction. So we're going to talk about or see all of those different reactions that we talked about in our last chapter. So single replacement, double replacement, synthesis, decomposition, and combustion. Now we're going to be adding quantities to those and seeing what is made out of each one through the reaction. Now, when you're balancing equations, we can kind of look at it different ways. And everybody thought of it kind of a different way. Some people looked at it through the molecules, where we have to look at it more of a literal sense. Since I have, and again, the coefficients are basically how many moles there are. We have two of our nitrogen atoms. We have three times two would be six of our hydrogen atoms. So then to have it balanced, we would need a two in the front. Two times one makes it two. And two times three changes that to a six. So we have six of our hydrogens there and we're balanced. So you can think of it as the actual molecules themselves of how many we have. We can also look at it as in its mass. So again, if we solve for the mass, we have one of these nitrogens. So we're going to take 14.01 times 2, which we get 28.02. Uh, hydrogen is 1.01, .01, and there are six of them. So 1.01 .01 times 6 is 6.06. .06. Add those together and you get a mass of 34.08 grams. Then we could do the same thing of finding the mass or the atomic mass of NH3. We have two of the nitrogens, we have six of the hydrogens, and you get the exact same answer. So if you remember, we talked about it in the last chapter when we talked about a chemical reaction of what you start with is what you end with. The amount does not change. Things do not just mysteriously disappear, nor do they reappear. So what I start with has to be the same as what I end with. And they're always, always equal when you're looking at your reactants and your products. Another way we can look at it is looking through your coefficients. So coefficients are really your moles. So how many moles do you have in your equation? So I have one mole of nitrogen. And again, a mole is just the amount of a substance there is. So we have one mole of nitrogen, we have three moles of hydrogen to get two moles of NH3. So we can really focus on this relationship through pretty much all of stoichiometry. We will use these coefficients a lot. So if we still struggle with balancing equations, I highly recommend coming in and getting some help uh, so we can get off on the right foot for this chapter. Okay, with mole to mole calculations, we are going to use our coefficients to balance the equation from the balanced equation to represent the smallest whole number mole ratio between the reactants and products. So this mole ratio is letting us switch from what we know to what we're looking for in our stoichiometry problem. Now, if we're looking here, when we're looking at mole ratios, we can have several different ways to write a mole ratio. You can talk about how many nitrogen you have compared to your NH3. So for every one mole of NH2, we have two moles of NH3. And again, we just know that by looking at the coefficients here. If we have, let's say we're looking between hydrogen and nitrogen, we can look at there's one mole of nitrogen to our three moles of hydrogen. And again, just using those coefficients. 
So we can set it up multiple different ways of a mole ratio, depending on what the problem is asking us to look for. So let's do a problem. So I know in your notes, it just gives you, I believe, the example uh, question, but does not give you this part. I don't think it does. So if 3.86 moles of potassium reacts completely with excess water, how many moles of hydrogen would be produced? Okay, so if you're given this problem and you're not given anything else and you're like, how am I supposed to know what I'm dealing with here if you don't give me the equation? It's given to you in the problem, or at least part of it is for the rest of you to solve. So we said if we have Potassium reacts, that's a huge giveaway that's talking about a reactant. So it'll be on your reactant side. Com so it reacts completely with excess water. So we know it has to be potassium plus water. Those two things are gonna react together. How many moles of hydrogen would be produced? We know that's a product. So that means hydrogen has to be one of our products. So how do we figure out what our other product is? Well, we have an element and a compound, that would be a single replacement reaction. So what we do, we change water to hydrogen hydroxide. We then check our activity series to see if the reaction occurs, it does. And we will switch them. So we'll have potassium put into the compound, so it'll be potassium hydroxide plus hydrogen. So you already know, since it asks you in the problem how many hydrogen is produced, you already know that's a product. So super helpful using the words to figure out what are you even looking at. We then can go from word equation to formula equation. We start with potassium here. Potassium is K and it is a monoatomic so it does not have a subscript. We then move on to water which we know is H2O and then we go on from there. Our product, so we have potassium hydroxide. Well potassium is the plus one Hydroxide OH is a minus one. You can either crisscross those or they're already balanced to so get KOH. And then we have plus hydrogen, H2, because hydrogen is a diatomic. You then balance it out and you should get two, 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 one. Okay, so that part's done. Now let's get into the stoichiometry part. So with stoichiometry, we always want to start with a K and a U. Well, we know and what we don't know are unknown. So the K is our known, and we get that from the problem given to us. So it's what any number that is given to us in the problem. So if 3.86 moles of potassium, that's what we know, it's the only thing we know. So we should be able to write that down. 3.86 moles of potassium. I wanna know what is my unknown? What am I looking for? Or the, what is the question asking me for? How many moles of hydrogen would be produced? So I want to know how many moles of hydrogen is produced. Another thing we can do before we get too far is figure out what coefficients are we going to need to worry about? Because there's only two, because we are just worried about what is our known and unknown. Well, my known is potassium, so I just have to worry about my 2K here. My unknown is hydrogen, so I only need to worry about my hydrogen's coefficient. These guys do not matter right now. They're just there to fill in some extra space. We just worry about what is our known and our unknown. Okay, in these problems, we always start with what we know. So we know we have 3.86 moles of potassium. And yes, I recommend writing everything out because later on, especially like tomorrow, when we talk about a mass to mass problem, you are gonna wanna have your units on there. It'll help save you some time and a little bit of a headache later on. Okay, so if I have moles of potassium here, that means I need to have moles of potassium. Well, my moles of potassium are two. Two moles of potassium. Again, just got that from my coefficient there. And I wanna switch to moles of hydrogen. So I look over here, I have one mole of hydrogen. So now I'm in moles of hydrogen, I can stop 
and just solve. Again, if they are next to each other, you multiply. If they are on top of each other, you divide. So we're going to take 3.86 times 1, hit equals on your calculator, divide that by 2, and you should get an answer in your calculator of 1.93. And again, we do have to deal with sig figs, so sorry. So we look at, up at the problem, we look at the number given to us, 3.86, all of those are significant, so we have three sig figs. So look at my problem. I'm already in three sig figs. I can't round it, so I'm good. My final unit needs to match my unknown. So it would be moles of hydrogen. So that would be my final answer. A way to check if your unit is correct is you go through the problem and everything should cross off catty corner to each other. So if I have moles of potassium here, I have to have moles of potassium down at the bottom so they cancel out. And it just leaves me with moles of hydrogen. So my final answer would be 1.93 moles of hydrogen. Okay, let's run through another problem. How many moles of aluminum will react with 0 0.512 moles of hydrochloric acid? Okay, so it says, again, how many moles of aluminum will react? That's a huge giveaway that that is going to be a reactant. So I have aluminum and it's going to react with hydrochloric acid. So I have aluminum plus hydrochloric acid. Well, I have an element and a compound, so that would be a single replacement. I change hydrochloric acid to hydrogen chloride. Again, I know that because it's hydroic acid, means the original name would be ide, and there's always a hydrogen in the front. I check my activity series to see if the reaction occurs, and it does. So that means I can just flip these guys out. So I put aluminum into the reaction, and I get aluminum chloride plus hydrogen. Okay, so that part is done. Now let's go to formula equation. So I look at the very beginning. I have aluminum, which again we know is an element. It is a monoatomic, so we just get Al, plus Hydrogen chloride, again, it's already kind of spelled out for us. Hydrogen is a plus one. Chloride is chlorine, which is a minus one. They're already balanced, so or you could crisscross them, and you get HCl. We then move on to our products. Aluminum is Al plus three. Chloride, or chlorine, is a minus one. We crisscross those and we get AlCl3 plus hydrogen. And again, hydrogen is a diatomic, so it will get a subscript 2. Balance it out as normal. And again, if you need help with that, come see me. But you get the answer of 2623. Okay, so we got it all set up, ready to go. Now let's get into our K and our U. So our K is what we know from the problem. So again, reads how many moles of aluminum will react with 0 0.512 moles of hydrochloric acid. So I know I have 0 0.512 moles of hydrochloric acid. What is the question asking me for? What is my unknown? Well, it asks how many moles of aluminum. So I need to know how many moles of aluminum are there. So again, I'm gonna figure out the two coefficients I need to worry about and then forget the rest. So again, my unknown is HCl and my, sorry, my known is HCl, my unknown is aluminum. So I get two and six. Again, I don't need to worry about these guys. They're just there to take up space. So again, in the problem, I start with what I know. I start with zero. 0.512 moles of HCl and I draw my train tracks. I'm going to switch from moles of known down on the bottom to moles of unknown on top. So my moles of known would be six, and again I get it from my coefficient over here, six moles of HCl. My moles of unknown 
I get for my coefficient over there. So two moles of aluminum. I now can solve. So when I plug this in the calculator, 0.512 times two hit equals. And again, if you do not have a graphing calculator, you have to hit equals. So 0 0.512 times two equals divided by six, because again, they're on top of each other, hit equals, you should get an answer of 0 0.1706667, okay? Well, now I need to figure out sig figs. So I go back to the problem here. I look and I see I have a zero in the front that is not significant because it is a leading zero. So I start at the five, one, two, three, so I have three sig figs. It means my final answer needs to be in three sig figs. Again, the zero in the front down in my final answer is not significant, so I start at the one. One, two, three, that zero is significant because it's sandwiched between two numbers. I look behind, it's a six. That means I'm going to round up. Zero point one seven one. Then to figure out my units, you can either look back at your unknown or these need to cancel out to be able to just leave you with your final unit, which would be moles of aluminum. So 0 0.171 moles of aluminum. That's how many moles of aluminum will react with 0 0.512 moles of hydrochloric acid. Okay, so I know that's a lot kind of going on all at once. So again, I want you to try your best, come with questions tomorrow, and I will be happy to go over whatever we need to, to make sure we're off on the right foot. Your homework is multiple calculations. You need to do all of them. Try your best, come with questions. I will be there tomorrow morning. So feel free to stop by and get some extra help. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you tomorrow.